Ramsey here. I was telling him on the way to the church tonight. So, uh, so important and uh, was so taken with what he said about God's abundant supply. I like what he talked about in terms of God simultaneously filling folks with the Holy Ghost and that, that plane of faith that we need to attain. Aren't you anxious to see God do great things? Great things. Praise God. And the Atlantic District can see great things because of the hand of God. We appreciate this man coming. Uh, I don't know how many times we've said he's come from Florida just to emphasize uh, the importance of his having left those warm temperatures. But we do appreciate it, Brother Kenzie. We know you're going to preach to us tonight the Word of God. Let's make him welcome as he comes. God bless the man of God. Before I read my text and get into the message the Lord's placed on my heart for this evening, I want us to pray and to seek the face of God for just a few moments. This is, if I understand correctly, a prayer conference. And I know that we've been learning about prayer because you never really know enough about it. Just want to gain audience with the King. Want to be able to make petition known unto Him. So I want you, if you would, for just a few moments, if you would just concentrate, if you would focus your energy for just a few moments and lift your voice, whatever promise God has given to you personally, I want you to pray it right now into existence. If it, even if you have not seen the beginning or the fullness thereof, I want you to pray, God, you have promised and I ask that you would fulfill that promise in my life. Now lift your voice, intercessors. This is the heart of the intercessor is in this house. Lift your voice. Cry out to the king. You know not what you can birth in this place through this kind of praying where we take just a few moments and enter into the presence of the king. Father, you promised a healing. You promised a deliverance. You promised a return of a wayward child. You have promised that you would visit with them. You have promised that you're going to give us revival in this house. And a move of God that's going to break every yoke. And bring to pass the dream and the visions of great elders that Brother Lewis was talking about. Who prayed and sought the face of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, New Brunswick, let the voice out. Let your voice be heard. Pray it until heaven shakes. Pray it until hell knows that you're committed. Pray it until you and your own spirit have an assurance that God has received you. He's promised it. He will do it. Amen. Thank you, Brother Lewis, for those magnificent words and reminding us of our need to stay connected to our heritage. I thank God for that beautiful testament. Brother Brewer, thank you for your invitation to come and to be a part of this prayer conference. It's been an honor. Your hospitality here in New Brunswick, even though it's cold on the outside, has been warm on the inside. And I thank the Lord for all of the hospitality, for the room, the basket, everything, every meal. Everyone has been so kind, and I bless all of you in Jesus' name. I have come for a reason to this conference. I accepted the invitation. I usually do not accept first of the year invitations except on rare occasions. But I accepted this invitation because I believe God has sent me here with a word that I need to speak. And everything that I have presented to you before this point is to bring me to this word so that I could declare this blessing upon this district in every church and every saint of God here. God, I just want to ask you, you don't know what the blessing is yet. I just want to ask. Will you receive that in faith in Jesus' name? I can assure you it's biblical. But I'm anointed of the Holy Ghost to declare unto you this word. And 
I believe that it is a prophetic word for some and other, a confirmation and an affirmation of what God has already spoken into your life, of what he has desired and hoped to do. So I turn your attention to Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 24. Deuteronomy 33, 24. The last tribe to be blessed by Moses is Asher. It means in the Hebrew to be happy, to be jubilant, to be joyful. And if ever there is a day and an hour when God is calling upon his people in spite of their adversity to remain joyful, it is today. The joy of the Lord is our strength. With joy you shall draw water out of the wells of salvation. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I believe God's ultimate intention is for his people to experience happiness, to be able to understand that the source of my joy is not my circumstance. It's my walk in relationship with Jesus Christ. And of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren and let him dip his foot in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass and as thy day, so shall thy strength be. There's none like unto the God of Jeshurun who rideth upon the heaven in thy help and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. I'm so glad God is a warrior God, and he's not afraid of the enemy. And he will fight on our behalf, and he'll go before us and defeat those enemies so that we can pass unscathed by the devil's intent. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heaven shall drop down to. And then this is where he comes in with this happy stuff. Happy art thou, O Israel. Who in the world is like the apostolic bunch today? O people saved by the Lord the shield of thy help and who is the sword of thy excellency and thine enemy shall be found liars unto thee and thou shalt tread. That means God's not only going to promise you these high places, this high place, Brother Lewis, that you were talking about, but we're going to walk on it. Not only are we going to look at it and say, wouldn't it be nice to be up there? The hand of the Lord is about to come upon this congregation and he's going to lift you to your high place and you are going to walk in the high place. So I bless you with the blessing of Asher. And that's what I have been sent to do. And I hope and trust that not only will you receive it, but you'll step into it. The first, I believe the first thing we need to do is to get joyful. Now, I know that your feeling may not agree with that happiness or that joy right now. I understand that. But I want you to put your Bibles down. And this is what I do when I want to express my joy unto the Lord. I want you to clap your hands unto the Lord and shout. Shout with a voice of triumph. Shout. Oh, hallelujah. Let the blessing of Asher come upon this people in Jesus' name. Let them receive it in faith. And a lot of times when I do things like this, I hate to do them just simply because I do not want people to think it's just another hype session. This is not a hype session. This is a word and a voice from the Lord for you. 
and I want you to receive it as such. God bless you. You may be seated. It is essential for us as a movement to prepare for the future because success is not complete until you have opportunity to impart who you are into someone else. Until that impartation takes place, there will be always an empty spot in your life. It's true with generations as well as individual leaders. We need people that have the ability to impart. Moses understood this principle because he was told by God, you are not going to go into the promised land. He could have been offended. He could have gotten angry. He could have gotten upset. And said, if you're not going to let me into the promised land, I'm not going to let anybody else go either. I'll do everything I can to obstruct them, keep them from it. But God said, you will give your strength to Joshua and you will impart to him the courage to accomplish what I am not going to allow you to do. It was his final address in Deuteronomy 33 and to the tribes of Israel. And when he started with Reuben, who was the proper birth order, he arranged, rearranged all the birth order after Reuben. He put Judah next and Asher last, and he just did all kinds of craziness because I believe it had a prophetic purpose for us today to understand and, and recognize who we are in Jesus Christ and to receive that understanding of his anointing, the anointing of gladness. The Bible says that Jesus was anointed with the oil of gladness above his fellows. And I believe that we ought to be the happiest, most gladdest. I know that's not a word, but I just invented it. The gladdest people in all the world. For only one reason, not because I cast out devils, not because blinded eyes are opened up, but one reason. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. He said, rejoice not that your ministry is anointed and, re and producing according to the work of the Lord, uh, but I want you to rejoice because your name is written. I'm saved. I've been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, spoken with other tongues of the Spirit of God, giving me the utterance. Uh, I believe in one God and I know his name, uh, and I'm not ashamed of that name. Uh, that name is Jesus. Uh, neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's shouting material for me. That's rejoicing material for me. And if you know that and believe that, you ought to rejoice. There ought to be such a gladness in this place. I am. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the cold, ever-loving, freezing New Brunswick and have prayer conference. Uh, but I'm glad I'm in this place. Uh, I'm glad I'm in the church. Uh, I'm glad I am who I am through Jesus Christ. Who are you in Jesus Christ? Uh, let the anointing of gladness come upon you right now. Hallelujah. And so Moses transitioned into this next wave of anointing by giving his final address to the next generation. And so I want to address the next generation because I believe in the power of impartation. Every gray hair in this house needs to impart who you are to these young people. Moses was about to release the people to cross over Jordan and conquer. He was preparing them. He had become such a leader among them. He was going to usher in a new kingdom age. But before they could cross over, there were some essentials. He had to take care of some business. He had to give them some understanding and direction and wisdom. And I hope that you would receive that wisdom in this place. The first thing he did was write the book of Deuteronomy and read tell the story and say I'm going to give you the second law and I want to put it in your life so that when you cross over Jordan you will not forget the Lord your God and so therefore he said I want you to learn from the mistakes of their answer we have we have crossed this wilderness and we have circled this wilderness because of our pettiness and our complaining oh Lord there I am again 
And because of all of our smallness, we have, we have traversed this wilderness for 40 ever loving years and I am tired of being in the wilderness uh, and you ought to be tired of being in the wilderness. Uh, he said, they failed to enter into the promise, but I am going to speak the authority and the power into you so that you can inherit what God has promised our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I just come to declare to you that Brother Urshan and all of the great men of God and Brother Evans and D.L. Welch, they spoke a revival into existence that they didn't see the fullness thereof. But I have come to declare to this younger generation what they spoke, you can walk in. If you would rise up with the faith and overcome your pettiness, your smallness, your littleness, your complaining and saying it's cold, it's too loud, it's too soft, it's too this. Quit all that nonsense. We got a world to win. We got a message to preach. We've got a life to live. We've got a power to release in this house. Quit telling me about how, how cold it is, how hot it is, how loud it is. It needs to be softer. There's always somebody with another opinion. But I want to know, does anybody glad they're in the house enough to say, I want to impart something in this place. I want to see a glory come down in this house that would break every chain in everybody's life in the name of Jesus. But Israel not only needed to learn from the mistakes of those of the former generation, they also needed a new mentality. The former generation died in the wilderness because they didn't have the right kind of thinking. They allowed themselves to be defined by the process and not by the mission. They allowed their circumstances to dictate to them, their immediate feelings to dictate to them how they would have faith for what God had promised. They knew how to come out of Egypt, but they did not know how to go into Canaan. And if this present generation is to possess the land, then we got to think differently. You got to like do what Paul said when he stood before Herod. He said, I think myself happy what he said and that's what you've got to learn to do because sometimes what you're going through is not happy but some of you need to start thinking right you're not thinking happy right now you're not thinking happy thoughts you're thinking this preacher needs to move on <laughs> No, but I'm going to stay here for a while because I've hit a stronghold and I come against it in the name of Jesus and you need some happy thoughts and you need to know how to command your thoughts and order them according to the word of the Lord and get a joyful spirit because you're thinking on the right things. I'm thinking about Jesus. And guess what? I just want to know, what do you think about Jesus? And, and we used to sing the song. Now, I don't know if y'all did that up here, but we sang that song. What do you think about Jesus? He's all right. I told you you didn't want me to sing. But you, you, you brought me to it. You've brought me to it. I can't help myself. What do you think about Jesus? Oh, y'all almost got it. You almost walking in a high place. But let's try it one more time. What do you think about Jesus? You need to get your mind on Jesus. You need to get your mind off the troubles of your life and you need to get your thought process on the scripture. We have authority, church. You don't need to get the authority. You don't have to pray and fast to see the miraculous. I'm not saying that some things don't come out but by prayer and fasting, but if you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got the authority to speak in the name of Jesus and the Lord God will honor your word and he will... You cannot get good enough to deserve God's miraculous power, but it's in operation in this place right now. Every one of you can be healed in this house. It's no trip to God to minister to every one of you in this place tonight. So I want you to start thinking. I want you to think not like a slave, not like somebody who's in bondage, but somebody who's free. We need to get a free thinking going. And you say, what do you mean by that? I'm free. I'm free. You say, how do you know you're free? Here's how you know you're free. The Bible says, ye shall know the truth. He didn't say if the choir sang. He didn't say if I sang it 700 times. How many of y'all remember those 7-Eleven songs that we used to sing? Seven words and we sang it 1,100 times a night. 
How many of y'all remember that? Like, I've got it and I've got it. That's only three words, but I'll, I'll be in the nursing home, but I'll be able to sing, I've got it. We sang it a thousand times a night and everybody would shout and praise the Lord. I want you to know you've got it. You've got the anointing. You need to start thinking that way. I'm free. I'm not in bondage. I'm not messed up. Quit thinking your depression. Quit thinking your despair. And start thinking your authority in the name of Jesus. And then speak it out of your mouth. And say, devil, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. There is revival in this house. There is a move of God in this place. There is an anointing in this house. Think anointing. Think the power of God. Think every time you come to church, the Lord's going to be here. Where two or three come together in the name of Jesus. He said, I will be in the midst of them. My God, I feel like preaching. I said, I will be in the midst of them. Israel had to receive a new identity in order for them to cross over. They had to see themselves as God saw them as conquerors. Their identity had to be defined by the future and not the past. That's why I use the term, the term Jeshurun. It is Israel in her ideal state. It's Israel functioning as God has designed. It's Israel elevating herself to a higher place in the spirit. It's Israel gaining that identity. Do you know who you are? You are not a defeated, messed up individual. You might have been before you came to Jesus, but through the power of the blood, the Lord God has saved you and delivered you. Everybody that I'm winning in Pensacola are messed up. Their lives are messed up. They're addicted to this, that, and the other. They've been married to this, that, and the other. And some of them aren't even married, but living together and doing all kinds of craziness. But I still believe in the power of the gospel. I still believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. I still believe that God is able to transform them and turn them into saints of God that love Jesus Christ and that want to walk with him in righteousness and in holiness. Do you have that confidence and assurance in the gospel that has transformed your life that can reach out to your community and see the revival that God wants to give? You need to rise up in the name of Jesus and believe it with all of your heart that God is still able to do that. That's who we are. Do you know who we are? We are a one God, Jesus name, tongue talk. I'm not ashamed of that. I come against the shame that's on people today for who they are. You are, I am not ashamed that I'm apostolic. I'm not ashamed that I'm one God. I'm not ashamed to preach it and declare it. I'm going to tell you something else. I'm not ashamed that people are standing up and clapping their hands and saying amen and praise the Lord and glory to the name of the Lord. You can be ashamed of who we are if you want to, but this preacher was born in a fire and I'm going to go out in a fire. I was born with a fire of the Holy Ghost and we're going to go out with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Ha! In the name of Jesus, uh, there's power in his name. That's who we are. But Israel almost must be empowered. They must have enough confidence in their leaders and in God's purpose that he's going to raise up the covenant and that God is not going to waver from his ability to deliver. He's going to fulfill his promise. I believe that that Communication is by the blessing. The Jews still practice it today when the elder blesses the younger. When the elder and Moses put his hands upon the leaders of those tribes and he communicated his faith and his understanding of God's purpose by blessing them. It was time for transition. It was time for the patriarch to bless their sons and to go beyond what Moses had done. He had brought them out of Egypt. He had gotten them through the wilderness and to the very foothills of Israel and Canaan land. And he imparted to Joseph.
Joshua the strength and the power to say you're going to make it all the way home. How many of you have ever been blessed by a word of encouragement from somebody when you were going through a difficulty and they came up alongside you and they spoke that word and all of a sudden the blessing that came upon you gave you the strength and the confidence that God was going to get you through. How many times has an elder come up alongside me and told me, put his arm around me and said, Brian, we're going to make it. 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 I want to do that myself. I want to know how many gray hairs in the house will join me. What is this blessing? It's a future already decided. It's God declaring his will to you while you're in a a state to both believe it and act upon it. And once you are blessed, you are blessed. And nothing can undo the blessing. The devil cannot undo this blessing. Nobody can turn around this blessing. God told Abraham that he swore by himself that he would Bless him. God took an oath and swore by himself. Now he has refused us the privilege of swearing. He said, don't swear. Don't swear by the temple. Don't swear by the altar or the offering on the altar. You cannot swear. But God swore and took an oath. Why can God swear and we can't swear? Because If I make a promise and I swear and I declare I'm going to do this, that, or the other, a circumstance can rise up. A snowstorm can come in and cut me off and and my promise would be aborted and I'd have to call you on the cell phone and I'd have to tell you, I'm sorry, but I cannot fulfill my obligation. Snowstorms got me snowed in. No way I can do it. But I'm going to tell you something. Ain't no snowstorm can stop God from fulfilling his work. If God says it, he's can, he can do it. If God has spoken it, he can accomplish it. If God has declared it, then he is the only one that I know of that in spite of the opposition, in spite of the resistance, he is always able to deliver on his promise every single time. But when God made promise to Abraham because he could not swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and surely multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. I've come to declare to you in this service here tonight that God is going to bless you with the blessing of Asher. God cannot lie. If he decides to bless you, you're going to be blessed. Blessing always gets greater with time. It never reduces itself. It's always getting greater. What God began with Abraham is still coming to pass in our life. According to Galatians 3 and 29, through Jesus Christ, We now claim the blessing of Abraham. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This pattern of blessing is true even in the blessing of Moses. He didn't just bless the tribes based on their birth order, but he blessed them according to the prophetic word. He began with Reuben, but he ends with Asher because he started with the least and saved the best for last. And I've come to declare to you that we are not going to go out sighing, weeping, wailing, saying, oh me, I'm barely going to make it. We're going to go out shouting and praising and worshiping and glorifying God. (laughs) Hallelujah. Nothing can stop the blessing. Nothing can stop the blessing. Now, I want to share something with you just to give you an illustration of what I'm talking about of how powerful the blessing is. This is a $20 bill. It's backed up by the United States Treasury. It has buying power. It has, and I know that for most of you, this don't mean much, but for these Bible college kids, they would kill to get their hands on it. So I'm going to wad it up. Look at what I'm doing to this money. I'm wadding it up. I'm going to throw it on the ground. I'm going to stomp on it. I have stomped it. I have wadded it up. But it's still a $20 bill. And it's still backed up by the United States Treasury. And I just want to know, with it wadded up, stomped on, how many of you still want it? 
Why do you still want it? Because it, it's still backed up by the United States Treasury. I know some of you have been through some stuff. You feel like you've been wadded up, thrown on the floor, stomped on. But I'm telling you, you're still backed up by the heavenly treasury of God's power and glory. Hallelujah! And it'll still spin just as good as when it came off the press. Why? Because it's backed up by something more powerful than just the paper it's written on. And you are backed up by something greater. You are backed up by something more powerful than just what is written on you. You're backed up by the very authority, by the blessing God put on Abraham. And God's going to honor his word. I say stay true to the message. Stay true to the truth. For it will make you free. So... I'm going to give you the five-fold blessing that God wants to put on New Brunswick. The five-fold blessing he put on Asher. If I can get you happy. And the only way you can receive it is you got to get happy to get it. You got to get anointed and your anointing comes from your joy. And God allows the anointing to operate in connection with your joy. I know it comes from the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit does not operate in an atmosphere of depression and, and despair. It, it, you have to climb above that and get into a spirit of joy. To illustrate that, the words up and out are used 251 times in the scripture. Every time it's used in reference to Israel coming out of Egypt. The Bible always uses this progression. Up comes first and out comes second. He brought you up to bring you out. Why? Because you can't get out of anything until he can lift you up. But if he can lift you up, then he can get you out. And it just depends on whether or not you desire to be released. Let Asher be blessed with children. The birth of Asher officially marked the end of barrenness for both Rachel and Leah. Asher represents to us the end of struggle to bring forth children, an abundant harvest of people being filled with the Holy Ghost. And so I speak it into your life tonight, that you're going to be able to go home, you're going to be witnessing to people, and before it seemed as if their minds were clouded and they had no desire for the gospel. But you're going to find hungry people as you witness and as you declare Jesus Christ all around you, people are going to receive your message greater than they ever have before. I bless this district with children. I don't know however many you're running right now, I command a du doubling to come upon you for you to double in your congregation. More babies, more new souls. I'm not talking about taking saints from somebody else. I'm talking about blessing people with the saving grace of Jesus Christ because they've got a desire to seek the Lord and I speak harvest. Now that presents problems because somebody might get your seat. Somebody might get your parking place. Somebody might come in and they might have a little more excitement. They might get up and testify and God start using them. You can't resist that. You got to start accepting that and getting happy about it. I'm telling you about it before it happens because it's going to happen and you're going to get aggravated. Because you're stuck in your ways. And when you get stuck in your ways, you're stuck in the mud. And when you're stuck in the mud, nobody can move you. You say, well, I'm deep. Well, you're stuck. <laughs> you need to kind of come up a little bit so you can get up and move some. And so, therefore, you need to understand that God is going to bless you with a victory. And listen, I'm telling you, here's the second part of this blessing. God's going to make you acceptable to your brethren. Used to, if you ever told anybody about a revival testimony, they resisted it. They said, well, I don't think God's moving like that in your midst because they're in the struggle. But God's going to make you acceptable to the brethren to where the brethren are going to receive you. 
brethren are going to receive you. Israel rejoiced over Asher and his children because Asher was the one who produced the oil for the sanctuary. I don't mind somebody coming in and worshiping God to create the oil that I might receive anointing. They helped to move the whole kingdom forward. They taught their daughters to marry into the priesthood. They perpetuated the priesthood and the temple worship because there was a blessing of favor upon them and you are not going to be resisted but you're going to rejoice in what God has done by making you acceptable to the brethren. I feel that blessing coming on you in the name of Jesus. We're going to be able to talk freely about what God is doing. Somebody got healed in my church last night. Somebody that blinded eyes were opened up and you're going to start rejoicing and accepting the report of your brethren. You're going to start receiving the blessing on other people and you're not going to be jealous or messed up because you know of a little something that's wrong in their life that you're judging and saying, well, maybe God shouldn't have blessed them like that and why is he blessing them and not me and, and all of that kind of nonsense. Get all of that out of your spirit and say, God, get loose in this house right now and bless every last and ever loving one of in Jesus' name. I want all of you to be blessed. I want every church in here to double. I want every church in here to be blessed. I want to see you move forward. I want to see our young people get excited about Jesus like they've never been before. I want them to be blessed of the Lord. Let him dip his toe in oil. Because Asher produced oil for the temple and the benefit of the priest. God blessed them that they would have an abundance of oil. This was a blessing of finance and a blessing of ministry. Now, when that ambassador, retired ambassador, came to Pensacola and he spoke to our church and I had the joint uh, Jewish people and everybody together, he was telling me what had, they had just discovered in Israel. They have just discovered right where the tribe of Asher used to be. There is the largest deposit of oil ever discovered in the Middle East. Right off the coast in the Mediterranean, they've discovered the largest deposit of natural gas. That once they learn how to get it out of the ground, Israel will become energy independent of every other nation in the world. They will not have to depend on the United States. <laughs> Woo! Praise God. They won't have to depend on uh, Iraq. They won't have to depend on Saudi Arabia. They will be independent in their energy resource. And I just want you to know, my, 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 I feel something going on right now. I speak oil into this place where you don't need to tap into nothing. You've got a well of living water springing up on the inside of you and you've got what it takes if you got to stand alone. you got what it takes to accomplish the will of God. The holy anointing of God is upon you and I speak oil into this house. Whenever you worship the Lord, there's going to be oil produced. It's not just going to be your noise. It's going to be the flow of the Spirit. And God's going to flow out of you. And you're going to learn again that God is true to his word. That when his people worship, God inhabits the praises of his people. I speak oil into this house. I speak. You ought to be happy that God has sent somebody to you to speak this word into your life and to declare what the Holy Ghost purposes and desires to do. Does anybody want him to do it one more time? One more time. It seems as if God is setting the stage in the world for him to return and come back again. And if he is setting that stage, then I want to be ready for the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost before he comes. I want the church to be ready. And the Bible says that the bride hath made herself ready by becoming glad. That's how the bride makes herself ready. I don't want to end this thing with disappointment. I, I want to end it with joy. I want to end it with worship. I, I want it to be oh, I'm going to go ahead and shout. I'm going to go ahead and praise him before I get the promise. I'm going to bless him before the promise comes because I'm not going to wait till he does it. But I'm going to pre 
worship and, and anticipate. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God out of the high shot. I think we ought to stop right here because you've got oil flowing in your life. You're anointed of the Holy Ghost. God has blessed you. And I'm not, I'm not speaking something that you did not have. I'm just simply affirming something you've already had, but some of you have forgotten that you've got it. And I just want to remind you, you have it, church. You have it. You have it. It's in you. The intercession is in you. The miracles are in you. The glory is in you. The power is in you. It's not on the outside. You don't have to go anywhere. You've got to walk with God. You've got a prayer life yourself uh, and God is able to call it up from the innermost beat. I want you to reach over and connect with somebody and begin to pray with them. I pray finance upon these people. I'm tired of our people struggling financially. I pray blessing of finance upon you. Hallelujah. I bless this congregation with children. I bless this congregation with acceptance. I bless this congregation with oil. I bless the churches of the living God with oil. Let the oil flow. Let our word flow. Let it break every yoke right now. The anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing of God that I feel flowing in this place will produce a revival. The revival that the elders dreamed about. I'm not speaking of my own thing. I'm speaking of what they spoke of. What they declared to be. God used them magnificently in their day, but God wants to use us in our day, and I impart this blessing unto you. I ask that you receive it tonight in faith. I bless you in Jesus' name. One of the texts in the book of Psalms is a mournful dirge from the heart of the psalmist because people around him would no longer say, I bless thee and the Lord bless thee and let him smile upon thee. He wanted to hear those words from somebody, but everyone had become so jaded and everybody had become so cynical and critical and messed up in their thinking that they could not even speak those words although it was a part of the high priest ministry that when the people gathered together he never turned them loose without blessing them first and whenever he dismissed them he was commanded by God to place the blessing upon them and they extended that to others declaring that blessing and I believe that we ought to start it again and we ought to do it again and we ought to let our words be words of blessing his shoes here's the fourth blessing his shoes shall be iron and brass the shoes of brass denote security peace and dominion it means all things are subdued under your feet. No fear. I, I speak against your fear today. You dwell in a secure house. God has given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions. When you have on shoes of brass, you can tread on them in Jesus' name. Wherever you put your foot, God will give it to you. Wherever the enemy attacks, you can put your foot down and say, I'm not moving from this spot. It belongs to Jesus Christ. 
I speak to every backslider. If you had all the backsliders that have walked away from God that live in New Brunswick come back to your churches, you'd have to build 50 new churches to put them all in. They'd fill this building up five times. You'd have to have five services on Sunday to put all the people in this building. If I had all the backsliders that I've preached to in, in, uh, in funerals that have come, whole funerals of people that used to be a members of our congregation before my time, I'm talking about funerals of 300 and 400 people, and every last one of them used to be members of our church. If I brought all of the backsliders, no one else, I would have to have five services on Sunday in order to be able to accommodate the crowd. That is no joke. That's not even evangelistically speaking. That is no joke. And I'm telling you right now, God's fixing to stir up the backslider. And I just want to know, does anybody want to get their brass shoe out? And put... I speak to the backsliders of New Brunswick and I say return. Come back again unto the people of God. Come back home where you belong. Am I building a seat a thousand people? I can put a thousand people at a time in our building and I still have to do it five times on Sunday to be able to accommodate just the backsliders that I've preached to in funerals and I've done over 300 funerals in 14 years since I've been there. How many funerals I've done in that city? And I'm telling you right now, they're there and I'm speaking it. I'm speaking it to you, but God's going to carry it on the uh, wings of angels and God's going to speak it into Pensacola and I'm just going to put my foot down and I hope that the ice, I don't slip. Praise God. Putting my foot down and I'm taking authority in the name of Jesus. I hope y'all don't mind if I come in your midst to pray and do existence a promise that God has given to me in my ministry for Pensacola and I declare it for you as well. And if you get it first, I'm not going to get mad. I might slap you, but I'm not going to get mad. I might hit you, but I'm not going to get mad. If you get it first, I'm going to rejoice with you because you are anointed to receive this. I said you are anointed to receive this. You don't need to get anointed. You are anointed. God is with you, church. I said God is with you and he is ready to bless you in Jesus' name. As his days, so shall his strength be. This means that every day your strength is going to increase. It establishes the spiritual law of the man or woman that is blessed. It's the law of increase and renewal. You don't have to follow the natural law. You get, if you follow the natural law, you get weaker as you age. But in the kingdom law, it increases. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Isaiah 9, 7. Make sure you pray. When you do pray, pray as big as God. He wants you to have and he wants you to receive this blessing tonight in Jesus' name. As your days, so shall your strength be. You see, God is not going to allow us to continue our worry and our anxiety because we don't know what the future holds. But God will not go with us into our future. The only thing God will do is he will be with us in our today. Because if you're trying to project the future and get into the future to find out what the future holds, then God is not going to go with you because only as your day is, so is your strength. And the Bible teaches and Jesus in his teaching declares to us that we should walk in the day and we should work while it is yet day for the night cometh when no man can work. And he also said that sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. So you don't need to worry about tomorrow. You need to live in the today because you've got strength for now to make it through whatever you're going through now. 
Don't worry about tomorrow because when tomorrow becomes today, then that strength renews according to the book of Lamentations. Jeremiah set it into motion that every morning the cup of mercy is new. It's fresh every morning. Every morning you wake up, the cup is full. You drank, you thought you drank it all down and you wake up and guess what? It's full again. And it's a blessing again. And it's, and it's, a, and it's a glory again. And God is blessing you and strengthening you and helping you. And he is magnificently in this place right now. Ready to bless you with this blessing of Asher. But you got to get glad. Let's receive that word. That was a word from the Lord. God has spoken into our spirit. He has taken the preached word and he has with his gift and his word of wisdom spoken it again into our minds and our spirit. Do not pass this moment by. Do not allow this opportunity to slip through your fingers because you're jaded or because things haven't worked out the way you thought they should or whatever might be going on in your mind right now. Put it aside. Set it aside. Don't let the jadedness, the sarcasm, the cynicism of today rob you of the opportunity to step into your authority and your anointing and receive the joy and the gladness that God is wanting to give to his people. Happy art thou, O Israel, because of who you are and that you are saved by the Lord. It's not just that you're saved, it's who's saving you. It's the God of heaven that's saving you. If it's somebody else saving you, that's not good enough. But God of heaven, he's saving you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want everyone that's under 30, 30 or under, I want you to come whether you're married or not, and I want you to just come and stand in the front, but I want you to get as close to this platform as you can. I want everybody 30 and under to come and get in, uh, up as close to this platform as you can, and then fill it up as each, each tear comes. Fill it up. Just leave a few space between you so that people can get around you and get up to the close. Uh, if, if you as an elder, that means if you're over 30, you're an elder to these kids. You really are. You don't really understand the culture. If you think you're still young and you're over 30, you're not. Not in their eyes. Now, you are in reality, but they don't always understand reality. You understand <laughs> Especially if they're 18 or 19, trust me, you're an old man if you're 35. So you're an elder, but if you receive this message and you receive it in faith, I want you to come and find some of these kids and I want you to lay hands on them right now and we're going to pray for them in the name of Jesus. 
and I want you to step out and I want you to believe God and I want you to come up here and we're going to lay hands on them and we're going to impart to them. It's time for impartation. I want you to pray. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to let God use you. God has ordained and authorized this meeting tonight in the Holy Ghost to give them a hope and a vision for the future. That if they will allow God to give them strength for today, if they will allow God to walk into their today and help them make the right choice today, Help them believe today. Kaya <laughs> Rana God will use this younger generation and he's going to continue to use you that are praying for them right now because God is using you right now in a very powerful way. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the power of God moving in this place right now. In the name of Jesus. I, I take authority over the spirit of fear and the spirit of offense and the spirit of doubt. I take authority over the spirit of cynicism and I release faith in this place right now. Faith in the supernatural. Faith in the word of God. Faith in the working of redemption that has produced in our lives.
Commit yourself to apostolic doctrine. Commit yourself to walk with God every day. He'll give you dominion and authority. Be happy you've been chosen to be a part of the one God church. Be, be thankful. Be glad. Be glad. Be happy that you're in the church. That you have a preacher that will preach the truth into your spirit and life. This power of impartation is what I'm living my whole life for. Is that in the end I can give it to someone else?